you haven't noticed, I'm not Dirk or Constanza, but they are at a conference in Pierre for all senior pastors in the ELCA Senate. So we'll keep them in our thoughts and prayers as they learn more there and bring that back with them and for safe travels as well for them. Um, this morning, we're blessed to be able to gather to worship our Lord on this second Sunday of Epiphany and to hear of Christ's baptism and the manifestation of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Holy Trinity here for us today. So let us rise and join in our worship. We'll begin in our black book on page two. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the maker of heaven and earth, the Word made flesh, the Lord and giver of life. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God of glory, God of peace, we confess that we have shunned the light that reveals the truth about us. We cling to worldly things rather than sharing the gifts of this earth. We trust ourselves above all. Save your people, O God. Sustain the rivers and trees that sing your praise and free us to live devoutly in the light and truth of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. The grace of God shines upon us, bringing salvation to the whole world. We are saved, our sins are washed away, not because of anything we have done, but because, according to God's mercy in Christ, renewed by the Holy Spirit, let us live in hope and joy. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share a sign of peace with those around you. Let us join together in our opening song, Come and Sing Praises, found on page 104.
Let us join together in the prayer of the day found in your celebrate insert. Almighty God, you anointed Jesus at his baptism with the Holy Spirit and revealed him as your beloved son. Keep all who are born of water and the Spirit faithful in your service, that we may rejoice to be called children of God through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You can be seated as we collect our offering. Our offering song is on page 73. Our offering song is in our Black Celebration book on page 73. Christ has died, Christ has risen. The first two lines will be sung by the men. You'll repeat that twice. Then the women will sing the bottom two lines two times, and then we'll both sing our respective parts together two times. morning. Our first reading this morning is from Isaiah chapter 43 verses 1 through 7. But now thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and the flames shall not overcome you or consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my sight I and honored. I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
The second reading is <clears throat> from Acts chapter 8, verses 14 through 17. Now when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. The two went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet the Spirit had not come upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. Yep. Our gospel reading for today comes from Luke chapter 3, verses 15 through 17 and 21 through 22. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah. John answered them all by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming, and I am unworthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff will, he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in a bodily form like a dove, and a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved, with you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated, and I invite the children to come forward as we sing Jesus Loves Me. Good morning. How are you guys? Good. Do you guys remember? Do you guys remember this? Where, yeah. Where have you seen this before? We saw this last week, right? Pastor Constanza had this last week with us as we started our season of Epiphany. She talked about where the star leads us and the different places that it leads us. So today it leads us to the story of Jesus being baptized. Now in this text, there's kind of a lot going on, so we're going to act this out together. Are you guys up for this? I need two volunteers, okay? Would you two be willing to be our Jordan Waters? Come on up here. I need one of you to stand over here and one over here, okay? This is the Jordan. It's a bit murky, as you can tell. Okay, there you go. There's your end, and there's yours, okay? Now you guys, what does water do? That's right. Wave it along there. We've got our water. Perfect. So we're at the water of the, jo the waters of the Jordan. Now I need another volunteer here. All right, you are going to be holding this, and what's going to happen is I will tell you to say something through this in a minute, okay? Do you see how that's kind of like a horn? Okay, can you stand right on over there? Perfect. All right, I need another volunteer. Who else had their hands up? Okay, would you come on up here? Would you be willing to be John the Baptist for us today? All right, standing right there is perfect. You're at the water. Can I get another volunteer? Come on up, dear. You are leading us with the star to our story here today, okay? But do you see there's something else on the end of our star? Do you see what this is? This is a bird. This is a dove, yeah? So we have a dove in our story today. So after Jesus is baptized, this dove appears, okay? So can you hold it like this? In a minute here, I'll tell you who to hold it over. Can I get one more volunteer? One more brave, happy volunteer. Come on up. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. You will be playing our role of Jesus here. So would you be willing to stand over here? Now, the rest of you guys all have a very important role, too. There's a lot of people at this story. So you guys are the company of people. 
okay? Can you guys all group together, maybe over here on one side together? And your guys' role is very important, okay? Do you guys remember, why did you all come here to the water? Do you remember in our story why these people came? I'll give you a hint. Yeah, they came to be baptized, okay? So you guys are going to start our story. Can you ask John here to baptize you? Can you say, can we please be baptized? Can you say that? Can we please be baptized, okay? So John the Baptist, can you go ahead and toss some water that way for those folks? Do you want to do that? Here, right here. Whoa. Perfect. Works great. And now Jesus also comes to be baptized. So Jesus, can you say, I'd like to be baptized? He would like to be baptized. Can we do that again? One more time for this guy here. All right. Perfect. And now, after Jesus was baptized, do you guys remember who came next? The dove came. So the dove, like the Holy Spirit, came over. Can you place that over his head here? Flip it the other way, though. So it's the dove. The star leads us, but it's this dove here. Okay? Yeah. Perfect. So like this. Perfect. <laughs> and then, off in the distance, we hear from the heavens, God says, this is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. I am well pleased. Even, even God forgets his word sometimes. Yes. Perfect. Go ahead. You guys can drop these things here. But for our closing prayer, what we're going to do, whenever we have a baptism, do you remember how we say that we are sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Jesus? Where we get those words from is met right here in the story of Jesus being baptized. Okay? So anytime you guys are around water, you can remember that promise that God loves you for exactly who you are. And when there's water around you, feel free to come make the sign of the cross. So over at our baptismal fount today, you guys can go over and grab some water and make the sign of the cross on your forehead as you head to your seat, okay? If you want, I'll be over here too. You can, I can help you. So come on over and then you guys can head to your seat. Do you want to do it? You can reach in the water. Go for it. Yeah, you were sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Jesus forever. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Good morning. Today we are gathered to hear from the Gospel of Luke about the baptism of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Baptism, water that takes away sin, death, and all evil and claims us into God's kingdom. I think we can all think of a time where we witnessed a baptism many different occasions. One in particular that always stands out to me um, was when I was at, in Sioux Falls, I went to Augustana, and I was working at First Lutheran there in Sioux Falls. I worked with a couple there, Larry and Carol Olson. You may know them there in the band Dakota Road. They've written a number of songs that we sing in our black hymnals here. And one day, Larry was telling me, many times he would get requests for people to write songs. And he shared with me about one particular song request that he had gotten. He was approached by a friend who was expecting a child. And they had found out that their child's future held many uncertainties and health concerns. In the state of worry and concern, they reached out to Larry with a request. They asked for a song that could be played at their child's baptism. Larry did just that. He wrote the song, Child of the Water. The lyrics to the chorus are, You're a child of the water, child of the word, guided by promise and stories you've heard. God of the wounded knows you by name and carries you home every day. 
In the midst of uncertainty, these parents clung to the promise of baptism. I love the lyrics, God of the Wounded knows you by name and carries you home. I don't think Larry could have written a more beautifully fitting song for this family who was so scared and unsure. In the midst of this anxious and stressful time, the promise is freely given. I think that is why baptism meant so much to this dear family. We hear in our text from Isaiah, I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. For a family so shaken, these words of God's promise were all they had to cling to. It's a promise. God promises forgiveness of sins in the waters of baptism and promises eternal life. It's not a checklist of added stress to accomplish. It is freely given. You are God's and he is your father. A promise. There is no questions about it. It's a promise for this family's child and for each and every single one of you. Where does this promise come from then? And how do I actually know that it's for me? Our gospel for, for today will beautifully open our ears to this promise and where it all began. We are all led to the fount by the baptism of our own Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In the waters of the Jordan, where Christ came to be baptized alongside many other people as we saw up here with our children. Last Sunday, we witnessed the wise men who were Gentiles. They were not Jewish. They had no prior knowledge of God or of church life or of coffee hour or which pew was theirs to sit in. God sent these wise men, who Jews would have deemed unworthy of the light, and he led them to the foot of the manger. Today we again see Jesus encountering the unworthy. John the Baptist is in the company of sinners who are coming to John with all of their unrighteousness and yearning for forgiveness through baptism. Christ willingly comes to the company of these people and only witnesses, not only witnesses their baptism, but is baptized himself in these same murky waters. God's son lets himself be baptized though he was without sin and performs what he was not obliged to do. For the sake of each and every one of you, myself and the sinners he found himself surrounded by at the waters of the Jordan, he told John to baptize him. When Christ was baptized, his ministry began. In order for us to be found righteous and saved, Christ became sin itself. He was sinless but was baptized so that we could be found righteous through him. Christ, who was holier than baptism itself, allowed himself to be baptized for each of you. When Christ is baptized, heaven is opened. Here we see how God in heaven pours out his grace through his son's baptism. Heaven, which was closed before, is opened by Christ's baptism. There's nothing separating us from God. We get to hear and witness this powerful moment when Christ was baptized for our sake. As the heavens open, God himself speaks and the Holy Spirit descends in the form of a dove. This is why we celebrate this in Epiphany. Martin Luther calls it the festival of manifestation because we encounter the Holy Trinity of God, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We have Christ in a physical form, baptized for all people. The Holy Spirit appears as a dove, often seen as a symbol of peace and innocence. And we have God himself bringing a sermon from heaven. The Holy Trinity manifested for all people. Picture this image of the Son of God in his bodily form as a man, the Spirit as a gentle dove, and God's own voice from heaven. When you hear God's voice, do we expect, how do we expect it to sound? Maybe the building around us would shake and we could feel the trembling of the ground below us. You might think of the voice of God who spoke at Mount Sinai to Moses when he delivered the Ten Commandments, where the earth was quaking and people feared for their lives. This time, God speaks in a way that we have never heard before. When God speaks, he says, this is my beloved son, 
in whom I am well pleased. Here God is loving, compassionate, friendly, and filled with grace. He speaks as a loving father to his child. He speaks as if to say, this is my son who has come not to destroy, but to bring new life. There is nothing in the way the Trinity appears that would make us afraid or fearful of our own lives. God, the Son, and the Spirit appear in the most peaceful and grace-filled manner. God comes to tell each of you, this is my Son. This is my Son who was just baptized, not because he needed forgiveness, for he had no sin, but who was baptized in the waters to take on our sins. Christ, a sinless man, became sin itself. I cannot even begin to fathom the uncertainty and questions that Christ must have had for his Father to become sin itself. Right before us here at Trinity, we have this beautiful painting behind our altar of Christ throwing himself down at the Garden of Gethsemane, looking scared, and it's a dark scene, the questions that he must have had. We were just talking with this with our confirmation kids about this text last Wednesday at confirmation and how Jesus threw himself on the ground, praying to God, seeking an answer somewhere, knowing that his betrayer, Judas, was on his way to have him arrested and killed. Christ was scared and uncertain. Much like our family I shared about that was about to give birth to a child whose future they could guarantee little about. Here in the waters of the Jordan, I can only imagine the weight of the accusations that Christ had felt to begin his ministry by taking on sin in the waters. But Christ, nor are we ever alone. Christ's prayers, prays at his baptism, and the heavens open, and God gives Christ a sermon. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. This sermon was spoken for Christ to give him peace and faith in the road he was about to journey on. After all, right after this text, Jesus is sent out in the wilderness of the desert to be tempted by the devil for 40 days. God never said that it was going to be easy, but he promises that he will be there. He gives this sermon to Christ and for all of us to know we are his children no matter what lies ahead. This promise is for you. How do we remember this promise in our daily lives? We remember our baptism and the sermon that God himself delivered at Christ's baptism. Martin Luther said, whenever you wash your face, remember your baptism. As you walked into church today, you might have saw there was a basket right in the front there filled with these water bottles. These ones that are right here. They say on them, child of God, living out my baptism. These were generously donated by Christians and Water, so thank you so much for that gift. The reason that we have these water bottles scattered around the church here is because we know that it's not easy to remember this promise when we're out living our lives, but we can deliver that promise to each other. These water bottles are around the church for you to take and to give to others here at Trinity or wherever life leads you. These bottles are a gesture to deliver the promise, to remind those around you they are a beloved child of God with whom he is well pleased. Whether it is someone you want to thank for their service ushering or reading or being a Sunday school teacher, serving at coffee hour or whoever it is that's around you, share this promise. Remind them of this promise a gift of water to remind them they have a promise that's given to them the day Christ was baptized and the Spirit descended and God gave a sermon. A sermon from God himself. Share this promise. Give a water bottle to those around you and remind them of this promise. I hope to give one of these water bottles to Larry down in Sioux Falls. Through Larry's song and the baptism of their child, God gave that dear family a promise, and with faith in their hearts, they clung to that promise. Let us go out as the church of God, sharing this promise 
in everything and all that we do. Thanks be to God. We will now join together in our song baptized on page 79. Pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. We pray for the church. Pour out your spirit upon us and enliven us for mission. Draw us together in love that we may be one. Lead us in the way of your beloved Son, Lord, and your mercy. For the earth, 
sustain oceans and seas, rivers and lakes, marshes and wetlands, watch over dormant plants and hibernating animals as they rest in your care. Renew your creation and protect all creatures from harm. Lord, in your mercy. For the nations, inspire leaders to work for the common good. Grant courage to those who put themselves at risk to protect others. Turn us away from violence and teach us to live in peace. Lord, in your mercy. For those in need, protect children and vulnerable adults who depend on others to provide for their daily care. Uphold those who struggle with depression. Console the grieving and heal the sick. Lord, in your mercy. For this assembly, bless the newly baptized. Renew your children in the covenant of baptism. Empower us by your loving spirit to serve our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. With thanksgiving, we remember those who have died. Hold us safe in your arms of mercy and bring us with them into your promise of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. Receive our prayers and fill us with the radiance of your love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. I just want to remind you, if you haven't picked up your annual report in the back yet, please feel free to grab one of those. Our annual meeting will be on January 20th. If you have already collected one of those last week, please also pick up. There's a supplemental financial sheet. Please grab one of those. If you already picked one up, just all you need is that sheet as well to go with. For other announcements, if you haven't looked in your bulletin, there might have already been that take-and-bake pizza form there. If you haven't gotten to order your pizza yet, Please feel free to do that. All proceeds for that go to the youth going on the Sky Ranch trip to Colorado this summer. And next week we will have our camp Sunday. So please join us for worship for our camp services. As well as in between, we will have our all-camp church party down there. So bring your questions about camp. Feel free. We can get registered there as well. And there will be lots of different camp kind of activities to do. I also now invite Ben and Colby, if you guys would like to come forward. Good morning. On behalf of the group of high schoolers attending Sky Ranch in Colorado this coming summer, we are excited to let you know that we will be having the Valentine's Dinner on February 10th at 6.30 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. 
The menu includes Tuscan blend vegetables, breadsticks, a garden salad, dessert, and the option of sausage and chicken rigatoni or Alfredo cheese tortellini with sauteed vegetables. The food will be provided by Tony's Catering in Brandon. Single ticket prices are $20, and for a family of three or more, it's $15 per ticket. We will be selling tickets in the Narthex before and after services next week. All proceeds will go to the support the Big Sky Ranch trip. On Monday, January 14th from 5 to 8 p.m., make sure to stop by the Pizza Ranch where the Sky Ranch youth will be serving to raise funds for the Colorado trip as well. Thank you for all the support you've given us this year already and over the last few years. It's really appreciated. Let us rise and join together in our sending song on page 77. Mm -hmm. 